part two, dynamic duet. One, two, three, four. We start the second part with four measures rest. And instead of just counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, let's count it like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So we're counting the measures as we count uh, the number of rests we're playing. So we're marking the measures. One, two, Three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Then we have the C chord on two and a higher C chord on four. So I would hold the whole C chord that we know like this and go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. then one, two, three, Do rest strokes so you're not going like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. In the third line, we have this rhythm one and two and three and four and. Remember in the in the previous duet, I said many times it's good to cut the measure in half and practice the first half of the measure and then the second half of the measure and usually simplifies that rhythm. The rhythm really repeats itself in each half of the measure. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and The other rhythm that's fairly difficult is the one in the last measure of the third line. One and two and three and four and one. One and two and three and four and one. Again, it is the same rhythm repeating itself in each half of the measure. One and two and three and four and. top of the page, on page 55, 
on the bottom part we have this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Same rhythm, the second two measures, different notes. One, two, three, then. In the second line, we do that wonderful thing called reverse alternate picking. We have a repeat sign for the third measure. One and two and three and four and. If you notice, we have two repeat signs in two measures. That means that we play this figure three times on that line and on the next line to remind you what the figure was you it shows it and then we played it another two times we played a total of six times so I go one two to myself three Of course, when you're playing the duet, you can also keep track of where you are by listening for the first line. When you hear... That means that you're playing this phrase two more times. Now the hardest part here includes the last line and the first measure of the line before that. We have this chord, and we have this chord. Well, I would just hold the whole thing and get ready for the G. It's really a C chord. And do it slowly. Everything comes on the end of the beat. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Then it goes to a small G7. And the first measure of the last line, one and two and. That's as far as we'll take it right now. One and two and three and four and one and two and. And then that C chord comes on the and of three, followed quickly by two eighth notes on four and. One and two and three and four and. One, and two, and three, and four, and... And that goes right into the fir first ending, repeating to the line before that, looking for the dots where the repeat is, and then jumping to the second ending. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and second and two We have a molto retard, meaning slow down mucho, slow down a lot in the last measure. But we're not going to do that since we're playing a duet and you will be following it in time. But you can practice it by retarding that first ending. One and two and three and four. Now it's your turn to play this part.